Okay, so this is like one of my favorite but eye-opening experiences with fairies. Okay, I know, I know. I never believed in fairies. I thought that was all the made-up side of the, <laughs> the paranormal and everything until it happened to me. Uh, that was, that was eye-opening. Okay, so where do I start? I had a, I have a daughter and when she was younger, I loved the idea of fairies and nature. I'm a nature person. So I started around this like n nature thing and the fairies were a part of it and, and everything, not really believing that I was going to meet fairies or anything, <laughs> but okay. So we erected a little tent with some twigs and some old fabric, pieces of fabric. It was green and shiny and we did this like little teepee and any nature thing we found, stones and wood, anything like that, flowers, we would put. And she was, it was on her dresser and she had a little egg carton, a little cardboard one, egg carton. And she, that's where she would keep the precious stuff, like the stones and the acorns and the sticks and things like that. And, you know, we were, that, I don't know. So every day I would, I'm a stay-at-home mom. And when they were at school, I'd be doing laundry and this and that. And, and when I would go and hang up her clothes in the closet or put them away, I would go, good morning, fairies, you know. <laughs> Cause I'm crazy I guess I don't know it was just like a fun thing to do so this went on for a while and I always thought to ask you know if there are fairies please let there be fairies um, in my children's room protecting them at night where they sleep just like angels I get you know I do the same thing with angels and things like that anything of the light so I think that all played into it and in having this very nature thing and a little girl and I think she was like 9 or 10 at the time. All this stuff. Well, I've been doing it up until she was 9 or 10. Just, you know, just part of. It wasn't like grilled into her. But, you know, I talked about fairies and things like that. So, she's also, I would like to say, still to this day, a somewhat skeptic. Doesn't believe in any of it. Even though things have happened and she's experienced stuff, she still believes that this is just mom's weird thing. That she doesn't really believe in it. So, so you can't make a child do or think what you think just because. So anyway, so one morning I remember I was walking there. Good morning, fairies. As my back is turned to the little fairy area on her desk, hanging stuff up and I hear a, like that, like a tiny, the tiniest tap. I just did the desk, but it was like that. And I went, that was almost like a response. Like, I, I, I'm sensitive enough to know that that wasn't random. And I turned around and I went, is that you, fairies? And they tapped again. Coming from the fairy area, I might add. add. And then I'm like, holy shit. I'm like panicking. I'm probably in full-blown sweats at this point because... Yes, I've dealt with all kinds of not so nice entities and dead people and, and spirits and stuff. I have never experienced fairies up until this moment. So for some reason, that blew my mind. I mean, I wasn't prepared. So I remember asking a couple more questions because the skeptic in me kept going, well, they won't keep tapping. What are the chances that the taps will keep going? And if the taps don't keep going, then I'll know... It's just something in the wall. It's just random. It's, you know, my brain can just say it wasn't happening. You know what I mean? Not the way I think it is. But I would take these pauses purposely in between questions because I thought if it's a random noise, I want, I want to make sure there's no rhythm to the taps. And every question, everything I said, no matter when I asked it, as soon as the question was over, it tapped from the egg carton. I mean, I got to that point where I knew it was coming from inside the egg carton. Well, that by that point, I went, Aah! and I just was like everybody else, and I ran like I saw a ghost. 
I ran out of that room and my baby, um, I don't know if he was, I think he was asleep because I did have a baby at that time. And I just went on the porch. I couldn't, I couldn't even be in the house. I was like trying to gather my thoughts and I'm going, okay, 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 okay. And I'm trying to rationalize what just happened and it scared, i it scared me. I'll be honest. It scared me. Uh, I can't explain why other than it was just, it was like going back. It was like coming upon a, being a skeptic and seeing a ghost for the first time. It was like that. I don't know. So I refused to go back anywhere near her room until, yeah, I just didn't. And then school pickup came. I put my little baby in the car and off we go. And he fell asleep in the back seat again and he was sleeping. So I'm sitting there meditating and I'm talking. Now, I know that all this sounds crazy. Don't get me wrong. I know if I was listening to this, I would be the biggest skeptic or thinking I'm nuts. So I, I don't feel bad. I mean, I mean, I, I know, I know why you're thinking it and I don't blame you. I just know this is what happened with me. And I'm just telling it as it is. And I will go on a lie detector test anytime to tell all these stories all over again. All of it's real. So um, I'm sitting in there and I'm meditating and I'm talking to my spirit guides and, and trying to figure out, was that real? And they did tell me in my head that they were real. They were fairies. And I'm like, how can that be? How? How can, how can that be? And they said, well, you ask for fairies for protection of your children, so we sent them. I'm not making that. That's just what I was told. Whether it's my subconscious or not is completely up to who, whatever people want to decide on it. That's what I was told. And I went, oh. Okay, so then I pick up my daughter, and she knows enough about me and this that I felt I could tell her. So I'm telling her the story and she's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Because up until this point, she's not a skeptic as she is now because she's a teenager now. So now she's not. But this at nine or 10, she was like, what? That's so cool. And I'm like, no, I don't know if it's cool. I don't know. Uh, there's fairies in your room. I don't know. So we get home. I'm holding my still sleeping, very sound sleeping son. And I'm carrying him and I'm telling her the story. And as we walk into her room, I felt safe with a nine or 10 year old and a baby. I don't know. And I just walk in there and I'm explaining it to her and I'm reenacting it. I turn to the closet and as I'm telling her what happened, good morning, Fanny. tap. And we both, I looked at her and I, we both looked like this. And my daughter in that moment became a fairy speaker, like, what do you call it? A, a fairy whisperer. All of a sudden she starts asking questions and talking and creeping up. Like she's talked to fairies her whole life. Like this wasn't even completely crazy or scary or anything. And I'm like, me, the psychic medium is going, uh. <laughs> so, so everything she's asking, tap, coming from the carton. And I'm going, this is happening. This is happening. You're a witness. I mean, I know you're a kid, but this, you're experiencing, experiencing it too. Oh, you know what I mean? Like that is so crazy. We're, I didn't know whether to be happy or scared, happy or scared. And she's just talking and talking. And I go, are you good or evil? I don't know why I asked that. And there was this long pause. And I think I said, are you evil? I don't remember. And there was this long pause of nothingness. And I went, oh, fucking thank God. And then it went tap. And I went, oh, that's it. We're, we're I, I don't even know. I don't know why I thought they were even, I look back on it now and I realize what the fairies were saying is by that long pause, because normally they were answering the questions right away or tapping to the yes or no's. Um, I think what they were saying is we can be <laughs> if you piss us, you know what I mean? Like, but who isn't? I mean, everybody has that side, like, yeah, I'm a good person, but push come to shove, you know, you'd, I'll hurt you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I'll fight back. I think, I don't think they were evil. I, I don't think anything sent to protect my children would be evil. And I've never believed that they were evil. I just was really frightened at the time. And I'll be honest, fear makes people crazy. Let's be honest. Fear does make people a little like, you know, it's a scary thing. So 
Anyway, I didn't run because I was trying to be protective of my children and everything. And I, and I thought the skeptic in me took over and thought, well, if they're in the egg carton, I'll just open the egg carton. Right? I mean, I'll see them. I'll physically see them. And my daughter's like, don't do it, don't do it. I'm telling you, I don't feel like it's a good thing to do. I don't think, they, they don't want you to open the carton. I can. Fe I don't think that's good. And I'm creeping over now, and I'm talking to the fairies going, please, I know you are not going to be happy. I just want to see if I can see you. I just, if you're real, if you're there, I want to see you and everything. I, I can't help it. So I creep over with one hand, and I open the carton, and there's nothing there. Nothing but the sticks and stones and the stuff that were in there already, but I could feel the psychic medium in me, could feel them sitting there staring at me. I could feel them in there staring at me, but I couldn't see them with my eyes, though I in some ways wish I could because and I don't know why, but I just feel like a proof. My daughter didn't see anything either. And I go, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then I closed it again. I don't think they were happy about it. They weren't, but they weren't evil about it, but they weren't happy that I did that. And then what else, What happened? I think um, we just left the room at that point. And I went outside and I left the kids together because I think at that point my son woke up. I left the kids playing in the living room for a little bit and I went to the porch and I sat there and I started talking to God my angels, my spirit guides, and I'm going, you know what? I don't think I want this. I don't think I want them anymore. I mean, it's scaring me too much, and I, the idea of them being in there is freaking me out, to be honest. And I just asked God to remove them. I think he, I think they did go, but uh, years later, um, I think around the time we we're moving, I asked them to come back. So I think they're still in my daughter's room. I, but I, but I told them when I asked them to come back, I said, you can come back. But we can, I don't want our kids to see you or hear you or anything because that's scary to them. It's scary to me a little bit, but I mean, I didn't want my children to be frightened. I didn't want the whole thing. I will add the reason I said all that, and this is the part of the story I forgot, and this is really interesting. My daughter said that she woke up in the middle of the night after the fairies because I didn't get rid of them. Um, I don't think they left right away. Oh, I think it was before the... I don't know when all this happened, to be honest. I don't know if it was before the tapping or after. I must have asked for them to leave after. Anyway, this did happen. I'm not making this up. My daughter will tell you, even as a skeptic, this is what she saw with her... She woke up in the night and saw fairies in her room. She said it's exactly like what you would think that they would look like, except their glow was violet pink she said that she saw a couple of them they were like six to eight inches tall like like that the wings the the very skinny the limbs and, and everything really long limbs but they glowed with a light they weren't like they glowed and that was like I, I did a picture of it maybe I'll post it in this video or um, as close as I could get with the Photoshop of what she saw until she was happy with it I didn't stop and she was like, that's, and this is right after I did it, like not years later, right after. So that's what she saw. And they didn't, she did her best to not look like she was being seen by them. And, and they were just like, like talking to themselves, but she couldn't hear words, but she could tell that they were communicating with each other. And then my husband, who's this big, huge man who doesn't like any of this stuff. Okay. He heard them one night and it, it still kind of freaks him out a little bit. This is what he told me. Um, he was going to the bathroom at like 2 a.m., something like that. So everybody's asleep. The kids are in their room, doors shut, all that. So he's in there, and he's going to the bathroom, and he hears coming from the kids' room, which was right next door, tinka, 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 like a little bell, tinkle, 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 being like all over my kids' room, and then crash, boom, boom, boom. Like they were like, and he thought, he was like, it was bizarre. He goes, he, I think he thought the kids were up, but he couldn't understand the bell because it sounded like a cat toy. But we had a cat, but we didn't have a cat toy with a bell. And 
he was like, I, he couldn't, he knew there was something weird about it, but his skeptic part was sitting there saying it was the kids. They were up and they were playing in the room. So he's listening to this tinkle, 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 tinkle as it's, you know, the bells all over the, all over their, their room and then crash, bang, boom, like, like toys were being knocked over and played with and this and that. And he's like, he finally gets up and he goes creeping to the door. And he can still hear it right outside the door. And something about it, he said, scared him. Like, he was afraid to open the door, but he had to. Like, and all of a sudden, he just turns the doorknob and opens it, and all is quiet. There was no tinkling. There was no, no nothing. The room was dark. The kids were still sleeping in their beds, sound asleep. And he said there was nothing disturbed in their room. Everything was in its place, and there was nothing all over the floor. He couldn't explain it. He just shut the door. <laughs> and he goes, I went right to bed. He goes, I climbed into bed with you, and I just was like, it didn't happen. I didn't happen. But he did tell me about it, and that's what he told me. So we each saw or heard something. So, yes, as far as I'm concerned... Fairies are very real. And be nice, gentlemen. They'll be nice to you and they'll protect you.